Hey, this is Daniel Harris. You're listening to the Bangers and Mash Show. What time of year is it, Mr. Mash? It is boogie fever year. Boogie fever? Are you ready to boogie woogie woogie till the sun goes down? I am. I'm the boogie woogie bugle boy from Company B. Well, that was adorable, but no. The correct answer is it is convention season, my friend. Oh, that's right, convention season. Yes, yeah, so as we record this, it is the 30th of September. It's the last day of September. October is all but here, and we are about to get on the road and head to Monster Mania 35. And this is, we determined earlier, our fifth Monster Mania together? I think so, yes. It's become an annual tradition going to this convention. Last episode, we were talking about how much of a tradition it is. How it's your favorite? tradition. Yeah, I really love going to these conventions. You see a lot of interesting people, some really cool cosplays. Plus you get to meet celebrities. Who are some of the guests that are going to be at this year's Monster Mania? Christy Swanson, who is the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, we love Christy Swanson on the show. I love Deadly Friend. We both love Buffy, so that's cool. I love Deadly Friend. Would you say you love Deadly Friend? I love Deadly Friend. Okay. Chris Sarandon from Fright Night. Yeah. And- Shannon Elizabeth, who played Angela on the Night of the Demons remake, but more importantly, she played Nadia. You know, the naked foreign chick from America. American Pie. Yeah, she has a couple of horror credits. She was in Cursed and a scary movie. She wasn't cursed? She's the opening kill. She's the Drew Barrymore. That's right. She yeah. is the Drew Barrymore. Continuing Fright Night theme, Stephen Joffreys is also going to be there. Evil Ed. The guy that played Charlie Brewster is going to be there. Oh, yeah. Who cares about him? I'd already forgotten. Yeah, he is going to be there. Ming and Brian. From Comic Book Men. <laughs> Comic Book Men. <laughs> William Cat from Carrie and House and Greatest American Hero. Yeah. Looking forward to meeting him. He's on my list for sure. Is that everybody we want to meet? Forget well, there was one more we wanted to meet, but he's not going to be there. Yeah. So. David Arquette dropped out, unfortunately, at the last minute just a couple days ago, which is a bummer. I think there are other people my brain is not totally awake yet. My brain's full of fuck. My brain is full of fuck, my friend. My brain is full of potatoes and bread. God, yeah, but they were good potatoes and bread. Yeah, we've already had our traditional McDonald's breakfast. I wanted to record it. JD said, I hate to record us eating. Listeners, do you really want to hear a bunch of fat nerds smack their lips while eating a McDonald's breakfast? I mean, (laughs) do you really want to hear that? If you write back and tell us that you really want to hear that, I promise next year the whole con podcast will just be us eating. Oh, Daniel Harris is going to be there? That's another one. That's the one we were forgetting Danielle Harris that's probably the one I'm most excited to meet really more than Shannon Elizabeth yeah I mean Shannon Elizabeth has some very interesting attributes about her but that's a nice way of putting it I kind of grew up watching Danielle Harris yeah I suppose so I guess she's only a couple years older than we are I was very little when I first saw Halloween 4 and 5 6 or 7 when I first saw those movies so aside from meeting the guests what are some other things you're looking forward to about this weekend loot clearly we're going to be buying a lot of shit in all likelihood and we will be giving you updates throughout the day Anything specific you're looking for this weekend? You know, I've said so much shit over the past couple of months that I don't even remember at all. I'm looking for the Fearsome Flush, real Ghostbusters action figure, the Haunted Toilet. That's my grail. Other than that, after doing the Hellraiser episode this past summer, I want to pick up some Hellraiser comic books. Oh, and the movie Tricked or Treat. I'm hoping to get that from the VHS Preservation Society. But other than that, I don't have anything in mind. I'm sure we will find all sorts of crazy shit. Oh, I do want to look for the Vaquez figure from NECA. Oh, yeah, the Vaquez figure. Yeah, um, that, that should be out by now. But let's finally get on the road. It's been a protracted morning. Next you hear from us, we will be in Baltimore. All right. Let's have a safe trip. And live long and prosper. Nerd. <laughs> oh, shell shock. After a very arduous, long journey, we have finally arrived here at the Hunt Valley Inn. You want to tell them what happened on the way up here, JD? Well, what happened is, fuck my car. Yeah, we got a flat tire on the way up here. We had to call roadside assistance to Which get... Which wasn't that assisting. ...to get the donut on, and then we had to drive half an hour to the closest tire shop. We had to wait while they put the tire on. It was a lot of hoo-ha. Well, especially when we just wanted to fucking get here. We get stuck in traffic on the way down here, which always happens, but that combined with tire 
tire trouble earlier really pissed us off. Normally, when we come to you with our con reports, we're very relaxed because we've been chilling for a while. Well, we have not been chilling. We've been here about 15 minutes, basically long enough to check in and have some ecto cooler, which we have plenty of for the trip. Yes. Out of all of that bullshit that happened today, there was one plus side to it. We got to play Turtles in Time on an actual arcade machine. Next to the tire repair shop was a retro video gaming store, and they had in there an original Turtles in Time arcade cabinet, and we played a little bit of that. I only had two porters in my pocket, but that still got us to about halfway through the second stage. I didn't get to fight Middlehead. It was hell. It's been a pretty stressful day. It was almost like a highway to hell thus far, but hey, now we're here. We are both starting to unwind a little bit now that we're here at the hotel. We pretty much got here just in time for the con to start. I'm not going to talk long because we're going to go downstairs and meet some ladies. Welcome to Fright Night. For real. It is Friday night, close to 11. We are both pretty exhausted. It's been a, a day with a lot of emotional ups and downs. More Let's, ups and downs after, or after the first half of the Once we got to our hotel, it got a lot better. When we get here to Monster Mania, the first thing we do is we hit the room that contained the celebrity guest so we could get some signatures. So what are some people we got stuff from? Danielle Harris. Danielle Harris, who was nice, a little aloof. She seemed generally attentive. I asked her what was it like to work Sylvester Stallone in daylight. She said he was very nice, and we talked about that movie a little bit how she was in water a lot for that film asked her about for the halloween remake did they approach you or did you approach them and she said that she approached them which was kind of interesting yeah, i asked with her being a child actor in the four and five of the original halloween franchise i asked her if there was any scene that actually terrified her as opposed to just acting and what i thought was going to be the case when she was locked in the laundry chute yeah in part five she seems genuinely terrified there that was not it she was just acting in that and i told her well then great job acting she's actually said that the part and I think it's four uh, where he chases her with the truck five that has the car chase in it it is five that has yeah, the car because her and her little friend are being chased through the forest he messes up he could actually hit me with the car we saw Daniel Harris walking around the dealer's room at one point and we actually just passed her on the way to our room I think we ought to go and talk to Bill Mosley if he doesn't have much of a line tomorrow it would be cool to talk to him again Bill was out buying stuff he bought a Frankenstein puppet yeah. We walked over to Christy Swanson's table, and I could already tell that I'm very, very nervous. This girl was in Buffy. She's in Deadly Friend. This is somebody that I've spent a lot of time thinking about. Very nice person. Yeah, she's super friendly. I told her when I walked to the table that I was a little nervous. She was very friendly. Cool about it, yeah. My favorite guest we've met thus far. She seemed to be paying the most attention to us as far as what our questions and stuff like that were. Her handler said, well, you should come to her panel tomorrow and ask those kind of intelligent questions. Now, I'm not sure if he was genuinely saying I was asking intelligent questions or if he just wanted me to show. Up. Well, no, he said you should come to the whatever so that you can ask her all these questions. And then she said, yeah, because you have some really intelligent questions. Really, really very attractive, I'll tell you. And yeah, she hasn't aged much at all. JD says I didn't embarrass myself too much. It wasn't a repeat of the Aja Argento incident. Right, exactly. <laughs> William Cat was really cool. He was super laid back. I told him how much I loved watching Greatest American Hero as a kid, and he kind of just gave me this, like, really? You watched that as a kid look? <laughs> I actually think I told him something that he didn't know. At one point, they we're talking about doing a movie remake of Greatest American Heroes starring Adam Sandler. Apparently William Cat didn't know about this. But I asked him about working with Red Brown and White Ghosts, and he said that Red Brown was really cool. William Cat overall was a pretty neat guy. Chris Sarandon just really seemed dismissive, and oh. he was charging a lot for his signatures. The problem with Chris Sarandon is he was charging a lot. If you wanted a signature and a photo, it was 70 bucks, which is what Bob England charged two years ago. I like Chris Sarandon, I'm a big fan, but he's not of the caliber of Robert England. He was nice. I think the price shocked me he was also the first guest we talked to. My brain was a little fried from the trip down, so I didn't really ask him any questions. The price kind of annoyed me. Uh, we talked to Stephen Joffreys from Friday Night. He was cool. Yeah. I don't want to say absent-minded, but he did seem like he was a little bit distracted almost. Said he just didn't have a whole lot to say. I think he did appreciate us giving him some props for 976 Evil, though. When we mentioned that, he got a little more interested. No, I didn't ask about the gay porn. Dude, why did you spend like 10 years doing gay porn? But I didn't. I didn't do that. I did not ask about the gay porn. Because you're curious. He was in major your movies and then he turns around and does hardcore gay porn for 15 years. What the fuck happened? But I didn't ask. <laughs> well, you know, maybe it was the steady living. Who knows? Let's see, who else did we talk to? Brian and, uh... Yeah, Brian and Ming from the TV show Comic Book Men, the compatriots of Kevin Smith. My mom loves the show Comic Book Men. Ming was really cool. I'm wearing my Camp Kaiju Godzilla t-shirt and he said, that's a really cool shirt, man. He was talking to me about it. He was very enthusiastic. Yeah. And Brian was as sardonic as he is on the TV show. They're not TV personalities. They're just themselves. I said that my mom's a big fan 
fan of you guys. And Brian said, well, why isn't she here? I said, well, she had to work tonight. And Brian's response is, well, if she was a really big fan, she quit her job. You asked him about that movie. Yeah, the movie he directed, Vulgar. He said that the next one's coming out next year. Or Possibly next spring is when he yeah, said. He says that every single time somebody asks him about that movie. Yeah, yeah. Brian hasn't directed a movie since Vulgar. And who knows if he'll ever get around to make another one. I don't know. And Vulgar wasn't even that good of a movie, but I figured it would be an interesting question to ask him. Everybody's going to ask him about comic book, man. And was Randall really modeled after you? Yeah, yeah. How's Kevin Smith? But they were pretty cool guys. Sarandon was the only person asking for like a stupid amount of money. Everybody yeah, else was was pretty fair. In I like the 20 to 30 range. Elizabeth. Well, we didn't get Dan and Elizabeth's signature because you were on the fence to begin with. When you saw that she was charging 40 for a signature, another 40 for a photograph? No, it was like another 20. She's Shannon Elizabeth. She's been in movies that people have seen, but I don't think of Shannon Elizabeth as a big deal. There's a follow-up to that because as we were walking around tonight, she was sitting in the lobby. You said, hey, there's Shannon Elizabeth. Hi. And she said, hi back. There, we got an interaction with her. Well, there you go. She's very nice. She seems pretty cool. Aside from signatures, we both spent a lot of money in the dealer's room. You want to talk about some of the cool shit we bought? Why don't you go through what you bought first? Going home with a lot of toys. First off, I got the brand new figure from NECA Toys of Vaquez from Aliens. I asked several booths about this. They said, oh, that's not out yet. And then this one guy had it. Okay, they're full shit. I got the Batman the Animated Series DC Comics figure of Zatanna, which I just couldn't pass up. Love Zatanna. Speaking of chicks I had crushes on when I was a little, here's the Ghostbusters Elect figure of Janine, my Annie Potts figure. Now, if it had been the Part 2 version where she was really hot, I would have loved that, but this one's still pretty cool. But now you gotta buy the rest of them so you can put the rooftop on Absolutely not. I have made the decision this year I'm gonna start buying the NECA Hellraiser figures. Thus far, I've only really found one person selling them at a reasonable price. I'm gonna come home with an Angelique and probably nothing else. Oh, and then I got the school card game. Movie buff. It's a movie trivia card game. We might play some of that. Oh, and then I got a bumper sticker that says, uh, My Spirit Animal is Godzilla. So let's talk about some of the cool shit you got, man. Aside from signatures, I didn't get too much of anything else. I did get three figures, though. Um, I got a, a Vira figure that you have that I've been eyeing up for quite some time. Yeah, the, the Amok Time Elvira toy. I really came here looking for an Elvira standy. That was like my grail. Yeah. And they didn't have it, but this is a good close second. The standy would have been life-size, and I could have made out of it a lot easier than I could this action figure. You do you, man. I got the Ultimate Evil Dead Ash, which does not come with a chainsaw hand, but I can live with that because it's still a really awesome figure. Well, it's got the demon hand which is cool. Necronomicon, the voice recorder. The voice recorder. Linda's head. The sculpt is pretty good and it comes with a boomstick. Yeah, it's got the boomstick. It comes with a motherfucking boomstick. It's pretty cool. And then you also got a Batman the Animated Series figure. I did. I got the uh, Catwoman. Oh, she comes with Isis. Look at that. Yeah, she comes with Isis. She comes with the gems and And then a whip. And Isis is even articulated. Look at that. She even comes with a little stand, like a little doll stand. Yeah, that's really cool. There are some things I saw that might come home with me. This guy had a lot of really cool original one-sheet posters. He had one for the movie Student Bob. Bodies. It's probably coming home with me tomorrow. And I probably won't buy a poster this year. The day had a pretty stressful middle section, but I think we managed to turn it around. Yeah. So that's it for day one of Monster Mania. I think we're both gonna go to bed, pretty much. I wish we could say we're gonna be out partying and having a really baller time, but we're both just beat. It's just been a bad day. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of stress today, a lot of ups and downs. Cutting off day one of Bangers and Mash at Monster Mania... 35. Uh, 35. <laughs> Day two of Monster Mania. Today we've mostly been buying stuff. We spent a lot of money down at the dealer's room. I do have to say that the dealer room is pretty disappointing this year. I know we found a lot of good things, but... Well, I think it's disappointing for you because there were two things in particular you were looking for that were not here. Three things, but I knew the one thing I probably wasn't going to find anyway, which was the Elvira standee. But I can't believe nobody is selling those, you know? got the Elvira figure, which is a good substitute. Yeah, you can still motorboat it. Right, you know. You made me lose my train of thought. I'm thinking of Elvira's boobs. I uh, th- that'll do that, yeah. The mask guy that's normally there every year is not there this year. Then I also wanted to get a copy of two Full Moon movies, which were Dark Angel and Shrunken Heads. The Full Moon table, which is there every single year, is not there this year. I talked to one of the other vendors, and he said Charles Band is apparently ill, and it made it sound like it was kind of serious. Man, I hope Charles Band doesn't die. Having said that, we still got a lot of cool shit. That one vendor sold us that whole box of open toys for 40 bucks. Yeah, this is cool. Yesterday, I was chatting with this guy who had a bunch of classic monster model kits. Him and I got into a conversation about the Universal Monsters, 
he was really cool and really nice and throughout the conversation we started talking about figures and he mentioned last night how he had a big box full of loose Universal Monster figures the ones that Sideshow Toys did back in the 90s and he said oh if you guys are still here tomorrow I'll bring it up for you lo and behold we go down to the dealer's room today and he spots us and says oh there you are I've got this box here and it was funny because JD had just said to me about five minutes earlier 30 seconds sooner yeah you said I don't have that much Universal Monster stuff and here's this guy he sold you a big box how many figures you would say in there like eight I had almost all of the Universal Monsters that I possibly want except for Dracula Frankenstein and the Wolfman yeah but I think I've got all the other big ones Bride of Frankenstein right. Invisible Man The Mummy The Mummy uh, Metalurgy Mutant Mole Man Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera. And Hunchback of Notre Dame. And the Hunchback of Notre Dame. So about seven. Yeah. The figures are fine. It's just that the box was filthy. It's covered in sawdust or something. I got Lysol wipe. That'll clean them up. Yeah, they can be cleaned. They can be vacuumed. But that's pretty cool that he gave you all those figures for 40 bucks. So that was a really cool deal. He was a really nice guy. Basically, there were three items I was agonizing over last night, whether or not I really wanted them. And today I went ahead and bought them. And I may be the only person in the world who thinks this is cool. Is an original a theatrical one sheet for the movie Student Bodies. Now, have we ever talked about about student bodies on the podcast. I think we did it when we did High School Horror. Or that's what it was, yeah. In case you've never heard of it, Student Bodies is this slash movie parody from the early 80s. Very silly, and I'm a fan. And this guy had this whole pile of original one sheets, and he had a lot of cool shit. He had an original Monster Squad, Alien, American Werewolf in London, a couple of Motel Hells, Heavy Metal was one I almost got, Vault of Horror I came very close to buying. Obviously, the bigger name titles were more expensive. Like, like Monster Squad. Yeah, Monster Squad was like 140 bucks. he said. 125 125 it was a little more than I wanted to spend on a poster. But student Bodies was only 40 It's in great condition, and it's going up on the wall in my movie room for sure. I got the 8-bit Freddy Krueger action figure based off the Nintendo game. And the reason I got it is because I have the 8-bit Nintendo Jason, and I thought this would complement it. And then I got the McFarlane Headless Horseman box set. And I agonized because I don't really have the room for it, but I've been wanting this thing for years. JD has one, and I've always envied him. And it was only 40 bucks, which pretty much is what it would have cost when it was new. Actually, I think it was 50 when it was new. Yeah, so I got a good price on that. I bought a Weird Al action figure that's new from NECA. And I don't usually collect that style. It's a Amiga style figure, but I mean, come on, it's Weird Al. Tying up Amigo of uh, Ghostface. Yeah. Because that is one of the few figures that would actually work well as Amigo. Because well, since he's got the cloth suit on. But. Yeah, but I didn't get him. As much as we spend at these things, we could spend more, because there is so much cool stuff. And let's see, we stopped by the VHS Preservation Society once yeah. again. God, oh, I got two movies we're probably going to be talking about on the podcast here in the near future. I got Next of Kin and Paper House, which are two artsy-fartsy 80s horror movies I've always wanted to see. And then you bought a movie at the VHS Preservation Society. Yeah, I bought Ma which I think is this granny movie that the Bangers and Mash listeners have heard me talk about for four years now. Uh, JD's been trying to find this killer granny movie for years now. And last year at the VHS Preservation Society, we got Grandmother's House, which we thought might be that movie, and that wasn't it. No. We're thinking it's probably Mom. Maybe if we watch these, and then I can get you to watch Mother's Day and Rabbit Grannies, maybe we can do a granny exploitation episode. Maybe. Five or six years ago, in my hometown, this woman opened up this Halloween shop. It had props and costumes and things, but what was really cool is she had all this homemade stuff. Only in that shop for one year. Well, lo and behold, Dion is her name. She happened to be here at Monster Mania, and she remembered me, and it was really cool, and we bought a couple of things from her table. Yeah. Like the face pod. Love the face pie. It's a pie with a face as the pie shell. Yeah, like I said, everything at her booth she makes. I got a little steampunk jack-o'-lantern. That'll go on my Halloween mood table this year. I know we got more toys or something, didn't we? We got some more toys. I got a good Jason figure. Um, oh, yeah, the Part 6 Jason. Yeah, the Part 6 Ultimate Jason. Yeah, that's cool. Part 6 is my favorite Jason movie. And you were saying before you bought it, well, I don't really have a Jason. Yeah. So. I think that's everything we've got at the dealer's room. We're going to hit some panels tonight. We're definitely going to hit the Christy Swanson panel because she told us to come. Yeah, we have to go. We are having fun at Monster Mania this year, but really the incident yesterday with the tire has cast a shadow over the whole weekend. The dealer's room, there have been some disappointments. I mean, there weren't really any huge guests. Yeah. This is not going to go down in history as our favorite Monster Mania, but I mean, who are we kidding? We're still having a lot of fun. We're getting ready to exit Monster Mania 35. Overall, the incident yesterday with getting the flat tire on the way here cast a shadow over the whole weekend, and it prevented us from having as much fun as maybe we could have. And you were disappointed. You were looking for those masks and those DVDs, and they weren't here. Yeah. Maybe a somewhat disappointing weekend. Not our favorite Monster Mania, but then again, we're still going home with a car full 
of all sorts of cool shit. Every space in my car is filled up with loot, with the exception of where we're sitting. The truth is, I don't think we spent more than we normally do, yeah. and we still got to meet some really cool people. We got to meet Christy Swanson and William Cat. We recorded the Christy Swanson Q&A. We were a little late. We just missed the very beginning. And because the battery is actually dying on my hand recorder here, we did not get the Bill Mosley panel, but it would have been nice to get that because it was great. The thing with Bill is you only get to ask him four questions in the hour because he talks. He, yeah. he goes on, and he had a lot of really great stories. And hey, we ran into some friends of the show. Dion and her Halloween shop, and on the way out, we ran into Darf Spanky, who was a cosplay model, run into a, these conventions from time to time. Yeah. That was kind of cool. One final run through the dealer's room. I got Psycho 2 by Robert Block, the book, which is totally different from the movie. Did you get anything else? Oh, you got a shirt. I got a shirt. Tell them about this ridiculous shirt you got. So it's Slimer holding two bodacious babes in G-string bikinis, and he's got his arms around them, and it says, I ain't afraid of no butts. I believe he's actually licking the one ass. No, I think he just has his tongue out because he's Slimer. That booth had a lot of cool shirts. They had a cool sleepaway camp shirt and Night of the Creeps, Brain Damage. It was Pizza the Hut from Spaceballs, but it was in the shape of the Pizza Hut logo. I pretty much bought everything I wanted, with one exception. Well, it was a toy vendor, and he had these hammer busts. He had Peter Cushing and Ingrid Pitt. And when I saw it yesterday, I really wanted it, but it was a little more expensive than I, the stuff I usually get, so I passed on it. Today, when I was doing my final run for him, I intended to get that, and he had sold it. So it wasn't meant to be. Maybe next year, you know? The guests were cool, though. Some of them were just a little aloof. There were some disappointments in the vendor's room. The trip was not the best, but we still had fun. We still had a lot of fun. We still bought a shit ton of craziness. What is your favorite buy out of all the shit you got this weekend? Well, there's the Elvira. Pretty proud of that. You've been wanting that for a long time. I don't know if it's my favorite buy, but it was my best buy. All the monsters for 40 bucks. I was, was thinking that good. too, yeah. I'd say probably my favorite probably might be the shirt. So the last minute thing. Yeah. And then my favorite, hands down, student bodies poster. I'm so happy to be bringing that home with me. Any cool cosplay? We saw this one guy dressed as the Crimson Ghost, otherwise known as the Misfits mascot. That was neat. Oh, there was a guy dressed as like a goat demon Prampus thing. Yeah. My favorite though was the guy dressed as Michael Myers. And and then he had his little girl. She looked like she was maybe three years old. She was dressed as Jamie Lloyd in the clown outfit. Doing a really cool Michael Myers cosplay, that's one thing. You see hundreds of Michael Myers at these things. But getting the little girl to dress up as Jamie, that put it over the top. That was a nice touch. It was a team. One was cosplaying as Freddy. The other one was cosplaying as the Preeper. And I'm pretty sure that the best Freddy cosplayer in the world. Who? Oh, yeah, that's the one that said, mind if I cut in? Mind if I cut in? Yeah, that guy was awesome. I actually went up and shook his hand. I wanted to shake my hand with his claw hand, but he didn't do it. Yeah, he probably not. wouldn't do that. But anyhow, I was like... Mr. Kruger, I really like your work. He said something like, yeah, I really slay him. <laughs> I did. That's fucking awesome. I love that guy. He commits. This one booth was selling Jason masks for your dog. I uh, know, yeah, I saw that. Anyway, I think my recorder battery's about to die. Final thoughts on Monster Mania 35. All right, not the best, but not the worst. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with that. Not our most favorite experience. I think, all things considered, the year we first saw Bob. Oh, that's something we need to mention. While we were getting coffee this morning at a Starbucks, Robert England and Bill Mosley were on the line behind us. Yeah. So that was amazing. Anyway, yeah, not our favorite Monster Mania Con. And some of it was because of the things at the convention. Some of it was because of other stuff. We still had a really good time. Can't yeah. complain too much. Yeah. I agree. So, signing off for Monster Mania 35. Before we go, you can find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash thebangersandmacho. Thank you, David Brown and Rob Mendez for the feedback. Trick or Treat Memories might happen someday. Ash vs. Evil Dead, maybe. I think we're going to let it run a little longer before we try and do something like that since there's only two seasons now. Thanks for all the feedback, as always. Thanks to all the followers and likes. Thank you, Juan, for liking everything on the Facebook page. It's awesome. Check out my blog. I'm still doing the Horror Fest. Happy October! And you will hear from us again soon. Oh, that's right. It is October 1st. <laughs> watch out for booligans. You need to watch out for those creepy little witches. <laughs> I am the Viper. And I'm here to vipe your windows. <laughs> I just met this girl named Buffy. I'm Pike. Pike isn't a name, it's a fish. I liked her, even though she seemed kind of flaky. But, as it turns out... You have been chosen, Buffy. To do what? To stop the vampires. Does Elvis talk to you? And things started getting weird around here. She was the one person I could really count on. The Slayer is unmasked. Let's finish it. I think this relationship has potential. If she can just get rid of those other guys in her life. Buffy... You're not like other girls. Yes, I am. Buffy, the vampire slayer. You didn't even break a nail. 
what role do I get recognized for the most? Um, Buffy. Mm, probably Buffy. Yeah, I would think so. Which is kind of, you know, it's like a long time ago, so it didn't bother me that I get recognized. You know what I mean? I'm sure it depends on, on, on that person's interest because, yeah. you know, for some, like, uh, even though I really love Buffy, for me, I can remember I rented the chase. Yeah, I get that. And I watched The Chase all the time. I felt like that movie was so much fun. It was yeah. a fun movie. So I, I definitely, I can imagine. You know, you, you yeah, know. it's it's mixed. Sometimes they just, they can't figure it out. You know, like, did you go to such and such college or high school? I'm like, no. You know, it's just, it's kind of funny, but yeah. Random stuff. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, how is it working with Charlie Sheen? Uh, well, I knew Charlie from before that because we had done Hot Shots together, and um, and we were both also in Ferris Bueller. But I didn't know him then. But we did Hot Shots, and then and then the Chase. So we knew each other socially. We had a lot of the same friends and stuff. And uh, you know, I I really enjoyed working with him. He's uh, probably one of the funniest people I've ever met. As far as he's just very witty and clever, um, super smart. And, uh, you know, I just uh, you know, tell lots of jokes and make me laugh, and you know, I enjoyed working with them. Mm -hmm. Did I see the remake for Flowers in the Attic, the Lifetime version? Uh, the, I saw some of it, the, and then. Um, uh, I had gotten a call to do the last two, because they did all four of them, uh, but it just didn't work out to do it, so um, I, I did see it, yeah. I mean, I saw some of it. Anyone else? Yes, in the back, yeah. Is there going to be any more psych? <laughs> I wish there would be more psych. Psych was really a great show. Um, it was fun to work on it, and everybody there was just amazing. And. Um, you know, I think they should do a feature film or something. You know, like a full movie would be really cool. We'll see. <laughs> that does happen. We're starting to start, especially now that you know crowdfunding is so popular that you're seeing. Uh, what was the one that where, that they just did the girl the what was it? Veronica Mars. That's it. Where they just did that. Where they had a show and they made a movie and stuff. Oh, really? So it's, it's totally possible because it's then it's the fans that really are asking for it. Right. I mean? So right. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Any stories about making the Phantom? Any stories about making the Phantom? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's lots of stories. <laughs> uh, that movie was really a true adventure because uh, you know, we shot in Los Angeles and then we went to Thailand in a town called Krabi, which is like a, a jungle in the middle of nowhere, you know? Um, so. That was, you know, that had its challenges for sure, and then we, um, and then we went to Australia to shoot as well, and that was amazing. So, um, gosh, a good story. Um, it's so hard. And now I'm on the spot. I can't think of something in the moment, but um, you know, it just it was a lot of fun to do. I, I had a great time. I still have like really great, like my stunt double from that film, she and I are still really great friends. We were just working together last week on a film. Um, she was stunt coordinating for me and, um, you know, so I made some good friends on that movie. Is there anything that, that you might want to do that you haven't done? Is there a side to you that maybe we, we haven't really seen yet that, that you would like to express as an actress? Um, Not to put it on the spot, but I know a lot of times that, you know, Maybe you'd want to, you know, really do something that's in the horror genre more now. Yeah. Um, I mean, me. I don't really watch horror movies. Um, I honestly, they freak me out. I get scared. <laughs> but um, you know, even though I know it's all, you know, just a movie. But um, you know, I don't know. I'd like to do maybe. I could do another horror movie, but. Um, I don't know, maybe a western would be fun. A western? Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Western. So, so if I was to look at Horses you, and riding. And what would be a couple DVDs that would be in your collection since you're not really into horror? What would be stuff that we would be like, oh, she watches that? Uh, I, I like docu-movies, really. Oh, do you? Yeah, I watch a lot of docu-TV and 
I don't know, I like History Channel and... Now, do you watch the uh, the channel where they have all the murder investigations? Do you watch that one? ID? Yeah. Um, I used to, but I don't, I have I kind of, I, that was a phase. <laughs> phase? <laughs> it was a phase. I'm surprised that you're, you talk about Westerns, that's, that's pretty awesome. I know, I've just never done one, so it would be fun to do one. I do have a motorcycle film um, in development right now oh, okay, that great. we hope to be shooting by next spring. So. so, do you ride a motorcycle? I ride, yes. You do? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. So, uh, how long have you ridden a long time? Um, gosh, I think in I started riding in '09, and then um, and then I don't know. The last four years, I've been on two wheels. Yeah, so. Maybe four years, like fully. What made you decide to start riding a motorcycle? Um, just craziness. I don't know. Um, I my husband is he's been riding like his whole life, and so um, I just thought I kept I'd, saying that you gotta try it. No, try. he never was like telling me to try it. You know, I just I just was like, oh, I'll, I want to try that. So I got like um, I want to go out with you and go riding. So I got like a three, you know, like a spider, which is like two wheels in the front and one right. in the back. And basically like a snowmobile on wheels. It's really fun. And uh, I rode that for a while and then and then I decided to go get my M1 license and learn how to ride on two wheels. And we go to Sturges every summer That's and awesome. we do lots of charity rides and uh, you know, I really enjoy it. It's fun. That's great. Yeah. Yes. How was it maybe what was the experience like maybe higher learning? Higher learning. Um, that was a that was a really good experience. Um, uh, I I I love John Singleton. You know, he's really cool, like very smart guy. He's also very funny, and uh, I I enjoyed that film a lot. It was good. Yeah. Yes. Hi. How was your experience working with the legendary Wes Craven or them? Ugh, um, you're gonna make me cry. Okay, so I loved him so much. I don't know, I just hear his name and it just, it breaks my heart, you know, because I, I went to his memorial and, uh, you know, he, he was a very special person in my life. It was my first starring role in a feature film and he just took me in and just took such good care of me and he was just so lovely to work with and he's, you know, He's just incredible, and everything that he ever touched and did was amazing. So, um, you know, he's greatly missed for sure. For sure. Sorry to get emotional. <laughs> uh, anyone else? I'll ask you a question about. Uh, so, as a, as who would when you look back, who would be some of your favorite directors to work with that just made the experience so much better? Mm, like names of people. Sure. Or films that you worked on, you know, names of films. That there was, you know, a certain film that you look back on that really was a blast to work on. That you know, you almost wish that would never stop. Well, Aliens in a Duffel Bag um, ah, that was, a good one. was, <laughs> was crazy, silly, whatever. But um, but I enjoy going to work every day just because the cast was so funny and it was just like belly laughing all day long so yeah, yeah it was just so much fun and diane cannon and, and that is uh, such an underrated movie yeah, yeah it's so it, good but it was just fun I that's, a, lot, that's a fun movie to watch yeah i don't really have a favorite or anything because i think your reactions on that are just mm -hmm. they're over the top and they're funny and it's it's really really a good one i'm glad you brought that one yeah. And how do you work with Dude, Where's My Car at? With Action Cushion? <laughs> Dude, Where's My Car? Yeah. How did I like it? Yeah. Um, it was fun. I had a really good time. Um, you know, it was a funny, silly movie, and the character had a funny name. <laughs> I had you work with the video game called The Cybers, the video game. Um, what's that? It's a video game called The Cyber. The Cyber. I don't know that. Um. No, I don't know that. Oh, my in it? Yeah. Or the voice of it? The voice actor in it. Oh, yeah, I did do that. That's right. I just never saw it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, uh, yeah, yeah, you threw me there. That's, that's good. Yes. For that, your part is just right every time. 
Eddie, was it fun, fun filming that part that you tried to laugh? Was it an ongoing joke throughout the film of the whole, uh, you know, I'm going to say, the kid, you know? Uh -huh. And after the movie was filmed, people would see you and like, kind of joke around with you about that? Like, yes, actually, it was like, uh, he's talking about um, Big Daddy. The old man. Yeah, with the old man. Um, yeah, I did have an experience. I was at the Century City Mall, and I was in the bookstore, and I was walking down the bookstore. I walked by the movie theater, and this pack of teenagers saw me, and they all started chanting that old, what are our kids? There are kids in this. But, you know, it was, I was like accosted by these teenagers. They just thought it was hilarious to meet me, and I was like, oh my god. I don't know. How <laughs> was Adam Sandler to work with? Adam's great. I knew him socially too, you know, like we had the same agent and we had known each other for years. And I almost did the Happy Gilmore movie. It didn't work out for the dates, but um, so we ended up Were doing you play the, the lead in that? Yeah, the girl. The Julie Bowen, I think, was the lead in that. Is that right? Happy Gilmore? I don't remember so. who ended up playing the part. Um, I don't, yeah, that was so long ago, oh my gosh. But, um, but we ended up doing Big Daddy and it was good, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. He's a funny guy. Uh, questions? Yes. How long did you get out of the speech from Lucky? Did you get anything that you said about him? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When you were doing Lucky, you had to do all the natural speaking. Did any of that stick with you? How long did it take to break out of that? Uh, actually, that that voice or that character. Um, uh, the way Buffy spoke was just something I created on my own. It was sort of a cross between my friend Julie Pressman and my uh, ex-sister-in-law Jill. And I sort of combined the, the way they both spoke was like that. And so that's kind of where I came up with it. And uh, it worked in the audition. I guess they liked it. <laughs> but it wasn't hard to, you know, I still talk like that once in a while sometimes. <laughs> how did you how did you get your start? In acting? Yeah. Uh, I was nine years old when I started acting. Um, started doing commercials and uh, I lived I was born and raised in Orange County, California, and my parents were school teachers and I just started doing commercials and then you know, got maybe, you know, go on auditions and then get something on a TV show or get a movie and, you know, just sort of got to work on it. So it's been 38 years now that I've been in the business. You know, a long ride. You know? Yeah. Do you feel like, like, uh, like Ferris was like your big break? Do you feel like that was, uh, like, what do you feel like the, the breakout moment for you was as far as an actress goes, where they really gained some steam in Hollywood? Uh, well, I think, I think, uh, I would say, it, I don't know, it was a combo, combination of so many things because uh, I was getting jobs like, you know, like I got an episodic of Cagney and Lacey, I think when I was 14 or 15 and I was doing, you know, big TV movies and then that was, it. then I was able to get, you know, the Warner Brothers movie, Deadly Friend and yeah. Um, it just sort of like word of mouth in the business, oh, hire her, she's, you know, good. But I also had the advantage of the fact that, you know, when I hit my teens, I, I started doing homeschool, and I also got emancipated when I was 14 years old, so I could work, like, a full 12-hour day and not under the child and labor laws. Yeah, so I, so the, I, it was like a, a producer's dream to have me because they, they didn't have to hire someone 18 or older to play 14, 15, um. or 16. So I was, I was able to get, to get a lot of those jobs because I, I had the emancipation and I also had gone to school all year round and, and finished when I was 15, so I didn't have to do the schooling either. So I, I worked a ton of, you know, in my younger years, you know. It's good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how do you like Paul Rubens? Paul Rubens is... <laughs> he's an angel. I just love that man. He's, he's an absolute sweetheart. We're still really great friends and, um, you know, uh, keeping a straight face. Uh, 
was always a challenge when he was on set because he's just, he's just funny all the time. He's just, I mean, he's a mellow, cool, kind of quiet guy. Um, you know, maybe publicly kind of quiet or shy, but when he's on or he's in a character, he's 100% and that death scene he did, I didn't even know what he was gonna do. You know, we were just, you know, did our lines, you know, I don't know, we just, we just started shooting it and then he did that death scene and, and it was uh, very hard to keep a straight face, I gotta say. <laughs> did, you, did you feel that when you were making Buffy that it was gonna be bigger? Because like, it kind of blew up. I mean, did you feel like what it was gonna become? You're filming it? Did you know, like, I know it's always, yeah. a, it's always a question where people are like, I had no idea, I was just an actress, I just was filming through the, you know, acting and doing my job. But, yeah. you know, at some point you look around and go, this is gonna be something this should actually do really well. Um, we didn't know if it was going to do well, and you know, I think that everybody who's working on the project always wants it to, um, and especially the, the studio, um, you know, wanting it to, to do great or, or do well in the box office and all that stuff, or make money, whatever it is. Um, I, I uh, you know, we didn't do that great in the box office, actually. You know, like, we came up against a movie called Death Becomes Her, like a Meryl Streep right. movie, that, that that was the one that won the week or that month or whatever. And then um, Buffy didn't really get its legs until it came out on video, and then it's like sort of turned itself into like so this cult cool. classic, right. yeah, and everybody like really loving it, but maybe didn't see it in the theater, so. So yeah. I'll ask the question that everybody always asks, I'm sure, oh, so did I they, did, did they, if they ask you about being Buffy on the TV show? <laughs> yeah. I knew that's going to be your question. Um, they did not ask me to, to play Buffy. Um, and it, it, it didn't ever bother me, it wasn't even something that crossed my mind. It, it was seven years after the fact, right. you know? I mean, Buffy came out in 92. I think that the series was in 97 or somewhere around there. I don't know, it was like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know, it, was, it felt like it was seven years later. But anyway, I wouldn't, you know, have been playing uh, high school anymore right. at that time. And also, they didn't get anybody from the movie, so it wasn't, it was like they were starting a whole new thing and a whole new, you know, show, sure. and cast, and everything. So I was just so happy that that uh, this character Buffy, this you know, you know, cool girl, that she was going to be a, a role model on TV for young girls to watch. You know, I just, that's what I was excited. And I'm sure the plus side of that is that if they watch the show and they weren't familiar with the movie, they're going to go back and check out the movie. Yeah, you know I what what guess mean? so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I would love for them to do, I would, I mean, if they were to do another movie, um, whatever, and they want me to be a part of it, I totally would be like, oh, okay, well, yeah, let me listen, what's up, you know. I would be a part of that, for sure, for sure. you know, forever Buffy, right? Forever. <laughs> By the way, you were the better Buffy, just uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> What was my favorite film that I've ever done? Um, I gotta say, I don't, I get that question a lot and, and I wish I had the answer. I don't have a favorite. I mean, I have, I have great memories from all of them for different reasons, whether, you know, it's the, the people that I worked with or, or where we shot or, you know, how it turned out or whatever, like I don't, I can't say that I have a question about Harry Hill. I'm sorry. You gotta do that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Would you all say in that crazy man trying to build a flower attic, would you say somewhere else and shoot into the Flowers in the Attic. Um, that mansion that we shot in uh, is in Danvers, um, it's just outside of Boston. And uh, it was also used in the movie, which is of Eastwick. And it's the old Crane mansion, I guess the Crane family who they the crane toilets like that they invented that or whatever I don't know. but this this uh, it, it was incredible I mean no we stayed in hotels but um, but the house was really I mean the property is absolutely beautiful and it just enormous so so cool it was fun shooting there 
screen for just asking people was it like me to have it? Is there any, I'll ask you a question before. Uh, is there anything, like as an actress, um, that you've gotten a script for that you've just turned down that maybe you wish that you wouldn't have? Because <laughs> um, uh, sometimes, like, subject matter, like, you might be like, well, I don't think it's the right opportunity. And then you look back and you go, maybe I could have, you know. I was offered speed. Speed? And I didn't get it when I read it. When I read the script, I didn't, I just didn't connect with it, or I didn't understand, it just was like all this, it was like just action, 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 and who knew this director was like going to be this guy, you know, that was like so amazing or whatever, so, I mean, you know, I could say, oh my god, I regret, you know, not taking speed because that was such a huge film, but I don't like to have regrets. There was a reason for it, you know what right. I mean, so, it's... But that's funny that you asked me that. I guess that would be probably the only one that would stick out in my head. I'm know? trying to have a good panel, so I try to ask the really yeah, good question. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a very good question. <laughs> yes. Did you laugh? I did not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I still yes. don't get it. I'll go right <laughs> Louise Fletcher, uh, she played my grandmother in um, Flowers in the Attic, and she's, you know, so well known for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest as Nurse Ratchet, and she is amazing. I um, loved working with her. Um, I loved working with Donald Sutherland and Paul Rubens, and um, oh my gosh, there's so many. Uh, I don't have a favorite actor. There's a lot of great ones, you know. So I don't think off the top of my head. What? <laughs> uh, if I did, I would have done it. <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> what film took us the longest to make? I think The Phantom was the longest one that I was ever on. I mean, we were gone. I feel like it took us three or four months to make that one. It was a long one. So what was it like making Highway to Hell? <laughs> Highway to Hell? Um, that one was... Who's the director on that one? Uh, didn't he do Drop Dead Fred? Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, he's Dutch, I think. Really nice guy. Um, Highway to Hell was, um, I don't know, it was out there. It was weird, you know. It was, I wasn't sure what the heck we were making sometimes. I was like, is this going to play? I don't know, you know. I, uh, I made that movie so long ago, and I've only seen it a couple of times. But, um, you know, I mean, God, Ben Stiller was in that movie. His parents and you know, it's Lita Ford. Like it's crazy. There's there's like some you know interesting yeah. <laughs> people in the movie. But uh, I had a good time. We shot in Arizona. It was fun. And Chad Lowe was cool. You know, really nice guy. So I had a good time. The choreography of the cheerleading dance. Do I remember any of it? I didn't remember it when I did it. I don't remember it now. Like, if you watch, you talk about the opening sequence. Well, I mean, if you watch it, I'm like one beat off everybody else all the time. Because I'm following, you know, the choreographer who's on the side of the camera, you know, because I had, the rest of the cheerleaders had more time to learn the dances and moves than I did. But it was like, oh yeah, you gotta just learn this really quick. I should have done better because I have a dance background. And I was just going to ask if you. I'm know. super athletic, but I was just, I don't know. Totally it's, it was challenging. How do you feel about watching yourself on screen? Um, I mean, that's a good question. She said, How do I feel about watching myself on screen? And uh, it's funny that you asked that because it's. 
when I watch a movie for the first time that I shot, I have a hard time watching it like as a spectator. I really watch the experience. Like I'll be like, oh, oh, why they, oh, that scene's gone, or that was cut in half, or what, you know, oh, I was so sick that day. You know, like I remember. It's like all these memories come back. You know. Do you critique yourself? Huh? Do you critique yourself? Like I should have done this a little different, or I should have done that a little different. Oh yeah, sometimes, definitely, absolutely. But I watch the experience first, and then I'm not able to really watch it as a spectator. And for like maybe the second time I see it, then I'm able to just sort of, you know, try to enjoy it as a story. But um, my hardest thing to is is my voice. That one, I don't know. I I don't like listening to or hearing my voice. I don't know. It's a weird thing. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like I get to do panels. I've done panels here for six years uh -huh. here at Cherry Hill, and I always have to like because I'm a fan. Like anyone else, I just holy shit! I want to see you next week's So, so it's, just it's bizarre. Like I just caught myself like, wow, that's so cool. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Did you get a little scared today when Ric Flair was catcalling you? What? Is that the wrestler guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny, I thought I recognized him because I walked by and he moved at me or something. And, uh, and I was like, wait, that's the guy. Because I have a nine-year-old little boy and he was really getting into watching the, uh, is it SmackDown or WWE? And, and um, there was this girl that fought and her dad would come out with her. It's, it's his daughter, right? So I, yeah, that's where I saw him. I was like, I saw that guy. Oh, he's on WWE. Yeah, uh, no, he didn't scare me. He <laughs> just was, you know, he's just... Oh, okay. <laughs> the wrestling world he seems like a nice man. Yeah. He seems nice. I don't know. The wrestling world's just imploding because Buffy is just talking about Ric Flair. <laughs> so, that means have a lot of it. Alright, so, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Yeah, 
Perry? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> The last time I saw her was at the cast and crew screening, and uh, I haven't run into her. It'd be nice to. I haven't seen her in many, many years. Yeah. So, what's the experience like? Because, you know, most people are probably here. I don't, I'm not sure if it's on your table, but I'm assuming a lot of people are like Buffy, Buffy, Buffy. Yes, so, what, a lot of Buffy. What's, what's it like to kind of be brought back into that since it's been such a long period of time where, you know, um, People are remembering you for, for this specific thing, even though your 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 list is huge of things mm -hmm. you've been in. Mm -hmm. So what's it like to kind of take that trip down memory lane and see that there's such a, a love for that character that you portrayed? It? I like it. You know, I mean, it's definitely it's a movie that I'm uh, I was I was excited and young. I was 22 years old, and I was proud to be making the movie. And you know, gave it 150 percent every day, and, and just had a blast. And and then I was happy to see it, you know, become so successful and become a, you know a cult movie. And um, I I I love it. You know, I mean, just yesterday and today, a lot of people coming, and some of you are here, um, just wanting me to write certain quotes that like certain. Of lines from the film, like on a picture or something, and I'll be, and it's fun because I a lot of them I've forgotten. Oh my gosh, I can't remember. You know, I, I forgot about that line. That's a funny line, you know. And so it's just it's really fun to to you know get into that and talk to people about but it. You mentioned you have a son, so mm -hmm. everybody usually this is always interesting because what we perceive you as and what your child perceives you as are usually different. So does your son watch any of your movies, and what does what does he think? My son, he's funny. He's um, he he's seen some stuff that I've done, absolutely. But he doesn't, you know, he's nine and a half, so he should totally at this point understand what it is that I do for a living. But sometimes he just doesn't, you know, like the You're other the person that makes him clean his room. He's not seen. Yeah, and I, he was on the set the other day because I was finishing a film, a Lifetime film. And uh, he had the day off school, so he came to the set with me. And uh, he says, well, what are you doing out there? I said, well, we're shooting, I'm gonna be shooting this uh, stunt. Um, I'm gonna be breaking, breaking down a door, you know? So we're gonna be shooting that next. If you wanna come you watch. You're breaking down a door? I break a, down a door. Now Lifetime's got my attention. And, uh, <laughs> and Magnus, my son, he says, he goes, wait, what? You're, you're going to break down a door? And I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, you're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> you're going to have to pay for that, Mom. I went, oh my gosh. This is so sweet. You know, like, yeah. it, that's when he doesn't get it. Like, he, he, he was being serious. Like, you know, like, no, it's fake. It, it, we own the door. Like, it's no deal. <laughs> yeah, this is funny. So, I don't know. Uh, yes, yeah, so in the back, yeah. <clears throat> Just a question about the whole Buffy thing, because you were the original Buffy. So how did you not become like you know they got Sarah Michelle Gellar to do the TV show? Did you were you preoccupied with other stuff for that or? Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, we talked. Yeah, um, we were talking about that earlier, and it's it was just something that was never, you know, they they and, it was so many years later, you know, okay. so. I couldn't play in high school when I was 30. I don't think that would have worked. You were an episode of Growing Pains when you sort of got Mike Steve or Kirk Cameron's character to do something that was against what you know, he was talking about. You know, you were bad. Um, yeah, I tried to get him to do drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time it was 1986, I think, somewhere around there, and uh, yeah, it was a big deal because they, uh, you know, they were talking about cocaine in the episode, and um, 
it's just highly controversial at the time, and I remember being kind of, you know, I don't know, for the network a big deal, and in the media and everything, so. But Kirk was great, you know, he was nice to work with. Yeah. You caught him through here. So. <laughs> and I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm really great friends with Tracy Gold. We live like five minutes from each other, so we're always, uh, dropping and watching each other's kids all the time. That's awesome. Yeah, they're good friends. Uh, any other questions? Yes. I do remember one of your cheerleading songs. Oh, yeah, that. How funky was yeah. the chicken? The funky chicken. Yeah, I'm still, I was over here thinking about it, and I can remember you doing all the ones, but that's the only one that's popping in my head. Yeah, well, the, the How Funky Is Your Chicken was a, not in the script. Um, that was not in the Buffy script at all. It was something that we added in. Um, the director said, well, we need to do a cheer, you know? And uh, my cousin, who was one of the cheerleaders, <clears throat> said, we need to come up with a couple cheers. Oh, should we do firecracker, firecracker, boom, boom? I don't know, I think we were trying to think of ones that we No, but you were a cheerleader at the time. No, I was never. Oh, sure. so you just were. Yeah, but was, she was in high school or something. So I was just trying to, and, and then I was like, what about that one we used to do when we were kids, the funky chicken? She goes, yeah, let's do that one. So we showed it to the director, and, and they said, that's the one we want to put in the movie, you know? So, so it was really something that came from me and my cousin Erica. You'd be surprised how much that kept going in the 90s if you did that. Yeah, yeah. It's good cheer. <laughs> Um, in Buffy, I did all of the fight scenes. I did all the, the, the fighting. What I did not do was the backflips, um, and I didn't do the motorcycle stuff, riding around in the motorcycle. But everything else I did. Did you all have fun making the music video? I did enjoy doing the music video. It was fun. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Have I mentioned I direct? So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, gosh. There's lots out there that are really great that, you know, love to have the opportunity or try or check it out or whatever, but I can't think of any names off the top of my head. Yeah. The line from Ferris? Oh, yeah. Um, he's sick. See, my best friend's sister's boyfriend's brother's girlfriend heard from this guy who knows this kid. He's going with a girl who's like, Ferris passed out at 31 flavors last night. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. <laughs> I used to do like any training at the, um, in like any movie, like stunt or doing exercise or practice. Uh, training for, um, well, on Buffy, I did five days of training um, with a martial art guy, a martial artist. Um, I, I, only 10 hours, like two hours a day, so 10 hours I trained. Um, and then everything else that we did was on set and choreographed and, you know, sort of planned out as far as fight scenes and things like that. Um, and uh, <laughs> I was just three days ago on set doing a full fight scene and, um, and I'm hurting, my body hurts, <laughs> it's bad. I can't do what I used to be able to do anymore. Well, because a lot of times- Aging I, sucks. I, I, think, I think that people, <laughs> you know, you hear these people that, that go on and they, they train for, you know, oh, I train for three months before I film this movie. And I think at that time they were probably, they didn't have a budget to allow you to train for that period of time. So they're like, all right, we have this, Guy, he's right. Well, you know, I mean, I, I sort of, I, with Buffy, I just utilized my athleticism, you know, and and my dance background, you know, and that's sort of what helped me through. 
you know. The program was great. We shot that in the Carolinas, um, in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, the Gamecocks Stadium, and then uh, and then all the exteriors of the school were uh, at Duke University in North Carolina, and I I loved doing that movie. It was it was a great time, you know. I loved the whole cast, and, uh, and I I had a lot of fun, you know. It was very cool. Uh, yes. Um, I didn't hear the last part. Oh, any actors that inspired me? Um, yeah, like when I was a kid, I was like cuckoo crazy for Lucille Ball. Um, and and um, Elizabeth Montgomery, bewitched. And my favorite actor was J uh, Jack Lemmon. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I just there were a few that yeah I really just loved. You know, especially Lucy. She's awesome. She's still great today. She's badass. Uh, anyone else? All right, so we're going to wrap it up. But I, I just want to, oh, you had a question in the back? Well, I was just going to ask, um, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but um, you did I know, uh-oh. No, 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 it's not bad, no, it's not uh, Just after, you know, you did Buffy in what, 92? Two. Two, okay. Um, your co-star, Paul Rubens, had had his little issue in Florida at that time. Was it weird for you to work with him after? Because, you know, he was peewee during that time, and then all of a sudden he had his issue, and he was a pariah, and the whole whole deal after that. Was it weird to work with him after that? or? I'm trying to remember if it happened before or after. It was before. I think it was, too. I think it was after. So was it kind of weird? Or oh, did you even know about it? Or did you even know about it? Yeah. I knew about it. Everybody knew about it. Well, yeah. Was it weird or nobody cares? No, I, I mean the whole thing was kind of silly, to be honest with you. Well, the smartest exactly. thing. Exactly. This, it was, yeah, it was so blown out of proportion, and and the smartest thing that that he could have done and did do was that when he went on the MTV Awards or whatever awards show it was and said, heard any good jokes lately? You know, remember when he did that? Yeah, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. And, uh, you know. <laughs> you know how America is, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, um, no, it wasn't weird for me. Uh, we're going to wrap up, but I, I want to thank you for, uh, well, first of all, uh, I like your shirt, I like your shirt, I, like <laughs> I, I want to thank you for uh, allowing us to, to, to have this time together, and also for just providing entertainment for, for people for just, I mean, literally, like I grew up, you know, I mean, I was a little bit into my teens, but I grew up really watching, and I just, I, I love this, so I really want to thank you, I'm sure everybody else does. Yeah. Comic Cons is so cool, you know. I mean, it, it you can get fan mail and stuff, but it's so much more fun to meet everybody face to face and actually they tell you something that you did that affected their life in some way, you know. It, it just makes me happy and it makes me feel like I'm doing my job and you know, or I did you know something we connected some way. Um, is really cool. So I, I enjoy meeting you all, and thank you for being so awesome this weekend. Ready? Okay. How funky is your chicken? How funky is your chicken? How loose is the goose? Our goose is totally loose. So come on, all you hot fans. So come